Hi, church family. Good evening. Hope you're having a great week. Hey, I want to mention just uh, one big announcement. Uh, this coming Sunday, November the 21st, we're having a big Thanksgiving potluck dinner, and it's at 6 p.m., and we just want to invite you to come and be a part of it. Uh, lots of good things happening. We're going to provide probably fried chicken, baked chicken, maybe some chicken tenders, and also ham. So the church is going to provide the meat and the drinks, and we're just asking everyone, could you bring a great side or a great dessert to share? And we're just going to have an old-fashioned um, potluck dinner together. We're going to be in the main worship center, actually, for this. And uh, we're going to play bingo. We, I've been a pastor 20-some years, never played bingo. But uh, we're going to do it just for fun, and we're going to divide into some teams. And my understanding is the losing team has to help with the cleanup. And uh, I, I mentioned this on Sunday, but I'm probably going to win because I just tend to win things. I'm kind of a winner, uh, but, but I, I'll be more than happy to help clean up regardless of whether I win or lose. But we'd love to have you come this Sunday at 6 p.m. right here um, at the church in the, in the worship center. The title of the message today or the teaching today is Remain in Jesus. Remain in Jesus from John 15. This is a a popular teaching. This is a part of the Bible reading plan that we've been on, um, I feel like, just a few days ago, and so I'm excited to, to share this with you. So let's begin. We're looking at the first two verses of John chapter 15. These are the words of Jesus. He says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. So we just got a beautiful analogy here, and we're going to spend some time in it, but let's first consider that Jesus is the true vine, the true vine. So there's a lot of application for us in our personal relationship, our walk with God, our walk with Jesus, but um, I think when he said this, it was really a bigger statement that uh, he's, he's speaking to people who are coming to hear. They, they've got a Jewish background. They, maybe they're wondering, could Jesus be the Messiah? Uh, some are convinced that he is. Others may be opposing him at that point. So this is kind of a big claim, but he is saying that he is the true vine. In other words, he is our source of spiritual life, and, uh, and salvation comes through him. Forgiveness of sins comes as the result of Jesus, that it is through Jesus we can be forgiven of sins. It's through Jesus that we can be reconciled to God in relationship with God, welcomed into the family of God. So it's a pretty big claim that he is the vine, the source of our spiritual lives. Uh, I'm reminded of other verses that are popular. Um, in there, there's a phrase that says, salvation is found in no one else. It's only in Jesus. He's the true vine. Salvation is found in no one else. Uh, Jesus himself is saying, uh, says about himself, um, I think it's just one chapter earlier in John 14, he says, no one comes to the Father except through me. Again, he is the true spiritual source of life, the spiritual vine for all of us, that no one is able to come to the Father, to be in relationship, be reconciled to God the Father, except through Jesus. We understand today that this also points to the cross, that it's his sacrifice on the cross, um, that, that ultimately made the way for us to be forgiven of our sins and reconciled to God. So we recognize Jesus today. He is the true vine. He is the, he, he is the, the beginning and the source of our spiritual life um, with God. Then we see um, in verse 2, which I've already read to you, that, that God is the Father. He is the gardener. That he is the gardener. That he is, he, he is working um, in this whole process to, to bring us to a place of fruitfulness. And um, he, he's working in the lives of his children. So if there's something in our lives that is opposed to God, that does not glorify him in some way, that he wants to remove it. He wants to remove the dead stuff or the selfish stuff or the immature stuff. And he wants to prune us so that we can bear spiritual fruit for him, bear spiritual fruit for his kingdom. We can live in a way that glorifies him and is useful to him in his mission here on this earth. And so in our lives, there are times that God removes things that need to be removed. Uh, again, selfishness, immaturity, insecurity, pride, etc., etc., etc. 
He kind of gets in our lives and in our hearts and roots out things that don't need to be there. And it can be painful. Sometimes there's confrontation and discipline involved, but he, he gets in our lives and, and, uh, and prunes us. And as he does that, he makes way, he, he removes the bad stuff and he makes way for new life and, and uh, new fruitfulness that, that he can do really great things in our lives that we might make a great impact in this world and bear spiritual fruit. So we're going to move now to verse 4. And now I, I do want us to focus in on, on the importance of remaining in Jesus, our relationship with God, our relationship with Jesus Christ, and how important it is to remain with him. Abide, another translation says, abide in him, that, that we remain um, in, just in a really healthy way, connected, that we remain connected. So let me read verses 4 and 5 to you. Remain in me. As I also remain in you, no branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. So if we're connected to Jesus, we can bear a lot of spiritual fruit. Apart from him, we can do nothing. And so... Um, the, the concept of, of bearing spiritual fruit is important, but I just want to make the point real quickly here that, that it's, it, in some ways it's not the point. Um, the, the whole focus is, of this is to remain in Jesus and be well connected to him. If we remain in Jesus and we are well connected to him, we will bear fruit. We don't necessarily have to plan or strategize or, or necessarily even make a huge effort to bear fruit. If we remain in Jesus... We're going to have the spiritual life of Jesus flowing into us, and we're going. The, the natural result of that is we're going to bear fruit. So again, I remind you in our Christian journey, in our walk with God, it's it's so important to stay closely connected with Jesus. Again, He is the vine; He is the very source of our spiritual life. He is the source of our spiritual power. And so, when we are well connected to Jesus, the vine. Then, then our spiritual lives are in a great place. And so I want us to, to take a moment and consider the difference between, we're going we're gonna to focus on apples today. I think um, in the previous teaching several months ago, I actually focused on oranges for a different teaching, a different scripture. But here we're going to consider an apple tree. And so I want you to consider a, a, like a, a, a healthy apple tree. And we've got a picture that maybe you'll be able to see that here as I talk a little bit. Uh, but but when, when we are in close relationship with Jesus and we have intimacy with Jesus, then our spiritual life is like these, these beautiful apples because we're, we're, be, we're receiving the life from Jesus and nourishment and strength and health. And so like these apples, when we are closely walking with Jesus, um, connected to him, remaining in Jesus, then our spiritual life is like these apples. It is, it is healthy and, and vibrant and our spiritual lives are strong because we are so well connected to Jesus that we are just experiencing spiritual health and vitality. Now we're going to look at some dead apples. These are, are apples that have rotted on a tree. I assume the whole tree is dead. And so I just want us to kind of think about that picture for a moment and consider that when we drift away from our relationship with Jesus, that... Um, Things can happen even relatively quickly that the longer that we separate ourselves from Jesus, again, reminding ourselves that he's the true vine, the source of our spiritual power, our, our spiritual um, vitality and life and strength, that, that when we pull ourselves away and disconnect ourselves from Jesus, who is the source of life, that our spiritual lives can move into even a, a rapid decline. And so if, if we consider these, these apples here, that our spiritual lives can become sick and diseased and, and unhealthy, um, decaying, rotting, that eventually if we reject Jesus and go our own way and, uh, and remove ourselves from his power, his life, he is the vine, he is our source of spiritual life and spiritual strength, that if we remove ourselves from him long enough that even our spiritual life could potentially even die. So as we think about that analogy today and we consider our spiritual lives, we're just reminded how much we need to be near Jesus, with Jesus, in his presence, that 
in and of ourselves, there's not a whole lot here uh, that's healthy or strong. But when we are connected to Jesus, we can be incredibly healthy, incredibly spiritually strong. The key to it all is to remain in Jesus. And if we are walking closely with him, we will be spiritually healthy. If we are not walking closely with him, then our spiritual lives can, can really fall away, even quickly. We can really struggle. So I've got an analogy. This is one of the first illustrations I ever used because I was so young when it happened. And, um, and so I just want to share with you, Jenny and I started dating in high school. I think you've heard my story that I um, was very much infatuated with her for a long time. I, I've known her since second grade. And so she, she started dating me when we were around Christmas time of our senior year in high school. Well, we went to different colleges. And so we were separated our freshman year and there were challenges. We couldn't be together. We couldn't spend time together. I remind you, we didn't have a phone to text one another because we're older. There was no Zoom. There was no FaceTime. We didn't have cell phones. As a matter of fact, I think she had a phone in her room. Um, but at that stage, it, it, within a year or two, it changed. But in 1991, when I was at Mount Vernon Nazarene College, it was then college, nobody had a phone in their room. But on this floor, we were, we were in the dormitory. I think there were maybe 50 boys on our floor and um, there were four phones and they were all in the hallways. And so, and I didn't get to talk to Jenny often because there used to be long distance charges. And so if I ran up the bill, I could get in trouble. So there are all kinds of factors. But when I would try to talk to Jenny in the hallway of the boys dorm, sometimes boys would be wrestling and loud or guys are coming out of the shower and like flipping each other with towels, or you, you got a guy over here like passing gas and laughing. And so it, it was just a bizarre, I'm, I'm trying to talk to the girl that I love that I, I hope will marry me someday. And I've got all of these distractions and um, it was a difficult time. I think she had a little homesickness, was trying to find her way. So she really needed me to support her and encourage her. And I wasn't maybe mature enough to do that well. So part of it was my immaturity, but part of it was we didn't have access to each other. And, uh, and so that's if I tried to call her from the hall. Sometimes she would try to call me and it would ring into the hall and somebody that maybe I didn't know very well would knock on my door and say, hey, are you Kevin? Hey, phone's for you. So I'd have to go out into the hall and, and try to have a loving, intimate, caring conversation with Jenny. So, um, we, we, you know, other than that, we could write letters and, and see each other every so often if we could, if we could both meet up at, in our hometown of Ironton on the weekends. So, we've been together all these years, and I would say that was probably maybe the most difficult year, one of the most difficult seasons of our relationship. And again, some of that was certainly because of my immaturity, but most of it, I think, was we just couldn't be together. We didn't have access to each other. We couldn't spend time with each other. Um, we, we couldn't nurture our relationship and strengthen it and build it because we were separated and not only separated, unlike today, we just didn't have the tools to be able to really spend much time talking with one another, connecting with one another. So all of that to say, if we wanna have a healthy relationship with God, if we wanna be healthy spiritually, then we need to remain in him. We need to be with him. We need to be near him. We need to seek him. We need to spend time in his presence. And these are just like, this is just Christianity 101. You've heard me talk about these things before, but let me just share some of them. Brothers and sisters, we need to worship. And I love the fact that many, many are watching the, the, the Wednesday teachings and worshiping with us online and and, you know, we're, we're still dealing with the pandemic and some of you are not ready to come back. And I totally respect that. But, but I would say that let's gather to worship virtually. Um, but, but when you're able and when you're ready, I just want to say, I think it's so important that we can actually come into the house of the Lord physically, that we can be together, encourage each other, and that we can worship God. That's a great opportunity for us to be near him, be connected to him, remain in him. Obviously, we pray. We pray to the Lord in the morning, throughout the day. We pray to the Lord at, at mealtime. We pray to the Lord in the evening. We talk to the Lord. We just talk and listen, talk and listen. And, and I want us to, to just 
build our relationship with the Lord in, in such a way that prayer is so natural. We don't have to force ourselves. We don't have to schedule appointments, but it just becomes so much a part of who we are that it's almost like breathing. We just pray. We're just with him, near him. We remain in his presence. We remain near him. We pray. Friends, I want to continue. I say it from time to time, but, but let's sing. And again, I realize some of you that may have no appeal to you, but, but for many of us, I think singing is a beautiful way. Um, I, I found for me that it's one of the best ways for me just to communicate to the Lord my love for him, my, um, my passion for him, that uh, I can pray those prayers. But when I sing songs that, that, that offer up praise to the Lord and gratitude for what he's done in my life, uh, there's just uh, maybe an even deeper experience emotionally, um, a connection, a bond that I experience um, when I sing to the Lord. Let's sing to him. Again, we don't always have to talk. Uh, we don't always have to be reading or listening to a teaching. Sometimes I think we can truly sit in silence and, and be in communion with the Lord. Just be aware that his presence is around us, that he is with us. And sometimes I, I, I believe that we can just think important thoughts in the presence of the Lord in silence, that we're thinking about ministry, that we're thinking about family, that we're thinking about some of our struggles and trials. And in, in those moments of silence in the Lord's presence, that we can fellowship with him and he can give us direction and clarity in that moment. Um, obviously, we, we, we just seek the Lord. Uh, another opportunity to remain in him, to be near with him, to abide in him is, is of course, to read our Bibles. And so I just encourage you to, to read along with the Bible reading plan that we have. Uh, get your bookmarks. Uh, we always have bookmarks to kind of keep us together during the month. But um, if you're not with the, the Bible reading plan, I would encourage you to read the Bible and spend time with, with whatever plan that you want to follow. And uh, just believe that that's a great way because we're receiving the truth of his word and uh, the Holy Spirit's involved that every time we read, it's not like reading a textbook. It's not an academic pursuit. It's a relational time where we are in his presence. We are receiving and listening and, uh, and, and he is helping us to see things through the Holy Spirit, making scriptures jump off the page and, and uh, flame with meaning right in front of us. So, so one of the ways we remain with Jesus, we study our Bibles. And then I think receiving Christian teaching is a good thing for all of us. That, uh, again, thank you. God bless you for, for, for watching this teaching on Wednesday night or for joining us on Sundays. And as you know, we are in an unprecedented time that you have access to the, the, the best Christian teaching all over the world. And so I would encourage you, it's, it's not about me, it's about the fact that we can learn and grow closer to the Lord. I would encourage you to, to seek Christian teaching um, as, as one of the ways that we remain in Jesus, seek him, um, stay well connected to him, and abide with him. Brothers and sisters, as you seek the Lord and you remain in the presence of Jesus, I remind you that he is the vine he is the source of our spiritual life. He is the source of our spiritual power. And when we walk closely with him, he does beautiful things in our lives. He transforms us. He makes us more like Jesus. And we will bear wonderful spiritual fruit, not even by trying, but simply by remaining in Jesus. He is filled with so much life and truth that as we remain in him, he, his, his life and his truth is flowing through us. And we're going to bear really wonderful spiritual fruit. So church, God bless you today. I hope that you're doing well. I'd love to see you on Sunday or have you join us online. Um, again, we've, we've moved the uh, 915 service. It's, we're approaching winter. We've moved it indoors. And uh, the 1045 service has always been indoors. The live streams at 1045 on YouTube and Facebook. We invite you to join us for worship on Sunday morning. And I also just want to mention this coming Sunday evening, we're having this great uh, chicken dinner, ham, potluck. We're just going to have a great opportunity to fellowship together and, and really to celebrate Thanksgiving. May God bless you. Let us remain in Jesus. Let's stay well connected to him. Let us seek him. He is the vine. He is the source of our spiritual power and our spiritual lives. Let us walk closely with him. Let me pray for you. Lord, it's good to spend time with the church family today. 
It's good to spend time in, jo in John chapter 15, Lord. What, a, what an important passage of Scripture. And so, Lord, it's just really simple. In a lot of ways, it's very clear. But I just pray that you would remind us today. And, Lord, some could be watching this today, and they're hurting spiritually. They're struggling. They actually feel quite a bit of distance between them and you and their relationship with you. They, they feel separate, like separated from you in some way. Dear Heavenly Father, just give us the strength today to come near to you, to draw close to you. And Lord, I know, I know that you will be faithful to come near to us. And Lord, I just pray that you would reestablish right now. If there is sin in our lives, Lord, we want to confess that. And we pray that you would forgive us of those sins. And Lord, we want to be reconnected with you today. In, in a way of, of intimacy. We want to receive your love and your grace today. Lord, help us to remain connected to you, to, uh, to seek you, to walk with you. And we pray, Lord, that you would just fill us today with your love and with this spiritual life and all the spiritual power that you want us to have so that, Lord, you could then use us to make an impact in this world, that we could bear a lot of spiritual fruit. And uh, Lord, through love and encouragement and friendship, that we could make a great impact in our community, in our world. Lord, we love you. I pray a blessing upon each person who is watching, every family represented. Lord, would you encourage us and strengthen us and bless us, I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you, church family. I hope that you have a wonderful week. And again, I'd love to see you on Sunday. Bye-bye.